Woo! Okay guys, the nights of summer twilight are coming to an end. We've seen the return of darkness and I can finally welcome you back to what's in the night sky. Yeah! <laughs> Alright guys, it's August, which means a lot of us are now starting to see the return of darkness. We're not stuck in this perpetual twilight, which is a great thing because August brings one of the highlights of the astro calendar, which is the Poseid's meteor shower. And I'm super excited for this year. The peak of the meteor shower falls on the same day as the new moon. So the Perseus Meteor, like it begins in July and it runs to the end of August, but it peaks on the 11th to the 12th. So the night of the 11th into the 12th. And New Moon is on the 11th as well. So you get to enjoy the peak of the meteor shower all night long from dusk till dawn. And you can expect about a hundred meteors an hour, maybe even more. Sometimes you get an outburst, but it's gonna be a really good show as long as you've got clear skies. Perseids meteors are very fast, they're very bright, they often bring a lot of fireballs and they've got this really sort of distinct pink and green colour to the tails and a lot of the meteors will leave vapour trails after they've burned up and you can see the vapour trails in the shots after you've captured the meteor. Um, so it's a really, really good year for the Perseids. Last year I did an article on my blog about photographing the Perseids meteor shower, I'm going to update that for this year, um, update a few things, and I'll put a link in the description below, and you can check all that out, because there's some good info there about shooting the Perseids Meteor Shower. Now with New Moon on the 11th, we have a Milky Way window from the 5th to about the 23rd, and we can finally take those blinds off the Milky Way window, because it's now peak darkness again. It's a really good month for viewing the Milky Way core. The Milky Way is just kind of out all night, and it stretches from the, the south, uh, directly up to the zenith, which is the point of the night sky above your head, directly above your head. And you'll get a better picture of where the Milky Way is going to be this month, as I'm going to show you now what planets are available this month. So as the sun sets uh, west-northwest, you'll begin to see Venus will obviously be the first one up, and that's in the sort of western skies, and it's shining at a very bright minus 4.5. Venus, also known as the evening morning star, because you can only see it in the, the morning and the evening because it's closer to the sun than us. But obviously it's not a star, it's a planet. Um, and that will set into the twilight skies. You've then got Jupiter in the southwest, and that will set at about 11, uh, half 11, depending on where you are. And it is shining in a pretty bright minus 2.1 at the start of the month and then minus 1.9 towards the end of the month but there you can see it setting into the west southwest at about 11 pm and there we have the milky way so it's south southwest and it stretches up to the zenith directly over your head and saturn is still very much in front of the milky way core right now uh saturn is shining at about 0 0.2 0 0.3 so not really that bright at the moment. Mars, um, a bit more in the south, uh, reached opposition last month. So it was very, very bright. It was the closest it's been to Earth for 15 years. Uh, it starts the month at about minus 2.8 and towards the end of the month, it dims to a, a minus 2.1. So it's still really bright at the moment and it's, it's looking really red. And uh, as you can see, it'll cross the southern skies the Milky Way will set into the southwest uh, about 1 a.m., 2 a.m. And then you can see Mars setting just before twilight kicks in at about 3 a.m. <coughs> and with regards to the planets and the moon conjunctions, there's a few. So we've got uh, the moon and Venus on the 14th. Uh, they'll be about 6.3 degrees apart. So it'll be a crescent moon and that will be in the the sky is just after sunset, in the western sky is just after sunset. On the 17th, uh, the moon and Jupiter will be about 4.5 degrees apart. And then on the 23rd, the moon and Mars will be about 6.8 degrees apart. 
It's also another really good month for International Space Station passes, so make sure to check the app ISS Detector or just whatever resource you like to use, but keep an eye out because there's, there's probably going to be a lot of good passes and good opportunities to get it cutting across the face of the Milky Way as well. Also, if you are further up north in Iceland or Greenland or Scandinavia or maybe northeastern Canada or uh, a lot of Asia, North and East Asia in particular, or the best yet would be the Arctic, there is a partial solar eclipse on August the 11th. That new moon is also a supermoon, so it'll be a partial supermoon eclipse. Um, but only in those sort of areas. I'll link a map below to where and how much you can see but definitely something worth looking into if you are in one of those sort of northern territories. Now I normally try and keep this uh, What's in the Night Sky segment for sort of wide angle astrophotographers. There's a lot of resources out there for telescope observers and uh, and that kind of a, like sort of deep space astronomy but I've kind of been doing this for wide angle astrophotographers but it's a good month to kind of blur the lines between wide angle and deep space photography uh, for two main reasons. One is that Andromeda, the spiral galaxy M31, is now very nicely placed above the eastern horizon. Um, so you can actually squeeze that into your shots with a pretty wide angle lens. I took this shot in the Elan Valley last year. It's a panorama with a 24 millimeter lens. You can clearly see Andromeda, the spiral galaxy, popping up from the horizon there. And we also have Pleiades, which is now beginning to rise into the northeastern skies, an open star cluster. And if you do have a star tracker, you can stick uh, a telephoto lens on there and get some really good images of both Pleiades and uh, the Andromeda galaxy. And you can check out one of my vlogs where I did exactly that. It's titled Photographing Stars on the Welsh Coast, I think, and I'll link it either up there or in the video description below and you can check that vlog out and see how I went about photographing Pleiades and Andromeda with a telephoto lens and a star tracker and it's it's surprisingly easy, really easy. Um, so if you do fancy giving that a go this month, it's a good month for it. On to the hashtag Wittens. Last month I asked you guys to tag your pictures of noctilucent clouds. I thought this was going to be a challenging one for you guys but uh, as usual you came through. First up, this image by Bram from Finland and there's just these really delicate noctilucent clouds in the sky above this little town. The colour palette is beautiful and I just love that the thing with these noctilucent clouds is that you can photograph them from like polluted areas. So it's, it, it's a form of astrophotography that's kind of available to everyone within sort of 50 to 70 degrees north. Also love this image from Sarunas and Greta in Denmark. This image of the bike here and just an absolutely incredible display of noctilucent clouds. But I love this image because it's got such a sort of story feel to it. You can just imagine being out riding around. Everybody's fast asleep. You've got the, the roads and the pavements to yourself and you've just got this stupendous display of noctilucent clouds that is really, really epic. I love this one. Uh, those guys also caught some really nice time lapses as well uh, during that period. Uh, so I'm going to show you some of these now. They're just absolutely gorgeous. I love these time lapses and noctilucent clouds. It really brings them to life and, and just opens up a whole new world, a whole new way of seeing them. Finally, my favourite noctilucent cloud picture probably this season is this one by Ainsley Bennett down in the Isle of Wight. Uh, a very early morning. Uh, capture as the noctilucent clouds started to get really high in the sky as, as the sun started to come up and the composition, the, the calmness in the water, the reflections, everything about this image. I just love this image. I reckon you're going to be seeing this one in the Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition next year. I'm calling it now. Anyway, this month, um, this month it has to be the Perseus meteor shower. Photographs of meteors anything with a meteor <laughs> uh, but preferably a Perseus meteor or a stacking of all of the meteors you captured in one light and I think I'll also look for images of the lunar eclipse that just happened as well I'd love to share some images of the lunar eclipse so maybe I'll do three of the lunar eclipse and three Perseus meteor shower images I don't know let's see how it goes anyway guys thank you so much for watching another video Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. And if you're going on to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.